Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Toshimura from uh, Nikkei Seke Japan. Uh, today is my second English speech in my life. Uh, I can do more better than uh, yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you about a short, short story uh, about uh, how should we share the surrounding environment in the uh, high density city. Uh, currently, there are only two universities in the world uh, that provide training necessary to become a uh, Shinto priest, not priest, priest. And the Kokugakuin University is one of them. Uh, Kokugakuin University is located in a quiet residential area, uh, about a 15 minute walk from Shibuya Station, uh, the busiest downtown area in Tokyo. Uh, the university campus has been redeveloped over the last 20 years. Although the campus redevelopment successfully provided a rich external space on the campus, uh, there are not enough room for students to chill out, no place for them to interact informally. Uh, the chairman of the university uh, requested us to create a bright and pleasant place uh, designed for uh, inter interaction uh, between the uh, political students and the foreign students. However, the campus redevelopment had already reached the maximum allowed plot ratio, so we had a very limited space to work with. Uh, fortunately, a small site on the other side of the street soon became available. And what's more, it was right beside the shrine, uh, in the bottom of the screen, uh, green roof. And on the other side of the shrine, uh, there is a mixture of residential buildings. And our site is very narrow. So we asked ourselves, how can we create a place where the students can spend time? And how should we design a university facility that would not impact the quiet surrounding environment? Uh, all the trees in the background had long been untouched in the adjacent shrine grounds. Imagine the sound of swaying leaves and the smell of soil and the cool breeze and the feel of the ground and the fruit uh, this is indeed a present place that enhances our sensibility. This shrine was built 1,000 years ago, and this environment will likely remain here for another 1,000 years. Uh, we wanted to create a place for students that integrated with this precious space, uh, which we call the grand environment. And uh, we also asked ourselves, how should we feel about a university facility being built next to your home, uh, we are cutting the dilemma between the students and the residents. We asked the residents for their opinions, and we found that each house has a gap where they can take in sunlight, wind, and a view. Uh, these gaps that to us seem so tiny were precious space and resort for them. Uh, the, we call this the small environment, and we decided to pass that idea on to the new building. First of all, we created a large studio without a corridor so that many students could gather even on a small site of the coverage ratio of only 60%. In addition, we made it feel larger by opening it up to the ground environment and uh, moved it closer to the shrine. Uh, being free from the traditional hallway and the classroom structure, uh, the interior space was gently sculpted by the winding wall to create a space that uh, can be used in various ways. At the same time, we came up uh, with, a, with a floor plan that inherits the uh, volume and attributes of the small environment, and it brings light and wind to the adjacent residential areas uh, by disparting the open space in accordance with the gaps between the houses. And the winding walls are uh, thick enough to prevent noise from entering the building, and there are no windows, so that the so that privacy of the neighboring houses is protected. Uh, we moved the building uh, in <coughs> and increased the distance from the houses as much as possible, and we tilted the wall uh, away from the shrine to respect the height regulations, uh, two height regulations imposed on the site. And this building has two floors above ground, two floors below ground. Uh, so that's the resident preserve the natural light and the views of shrine greenery. Uh, let's explain this building in three dimensions. Uh, this is a previous building. 
and the winding wall traces the outline of the previous building. And the curved roof draws in the ground environment while maximizing the sunlight access to the new and adjacent buildings. And the building shape was designed so that to have the same light environment as the previous building. And the largest opening to the wind uh, shrine is tilted so as not to exceed the height regulations imposed on the site. Uh, by providing ventilation openings to the grazed wall, uh, fresh, uh, cooled air of the shrine forest is taken into the building. And by also planting trees uh, beside houses, uh, the shrine's greenery seemingly expands across the site. Residencies and uh, university facilities are often in conflict with each other, uh, but this project uh, we are in intended to reciprocate environment-mediated exchanges. Uh, this is a place for students that unites with the ground environment and uh, impacts on neighboring residents are minimized. For energy efficiency, uh, air conditioning is delivered under the floor uh, to provide cooling where the people are. And uh, the trees became a natural sunshade to the large window on the south side of the building. And next, I'd like you to see the actual finished project images. Uh, this is our answer. This is a place for students that integrated with uh, surrounding environment and uh, provides inspiration. Uh, here, students work, working in the forest. Uh, just look at this wonderful view. Uh, everything is, uh, is owned by an uh, adjacent shrine. Uh, the covered ceiling slopes towards the concave side of the winding wall, and the space below feels peaceful. And uh, here, a uh, glass screen can be closed to make a separate room for, for uh, lectures and group running. Students can participate from outside the room. The chairs are laid out uh, in an orderly way, but the students can move around as they wish. Uh, the <coughs> winding wall did not create a monotonous square room. Uh, lecturers and uh, students uh, move around as they wish. Uh, there is no one-way lecture from teachers to students here. Uh, this studio has a width of about, about 40 meters. Every space is different due to the winding wall and the curved roof. Uh, here, with the passage of time and the light coming from the window and the shadows of the trees, dramatically change the inside scene. Detailing, a uh, choice of material, articulation, and rhythm all support this uh, dynamic influence of nature and the sense of time and the space. Uh, it can be felt in all parts of the building uh, thanks to the great south wall facing the shrine. Uh, this is a simulation of when the uh, <coughs> Fresh cooled air was lines draw into the building by seasonal wind. Uh, these winds provide ventilation to the building for 6% uh, of the day from April to May and October to November. Without the need for air conditioning, uh, students can feel the natural breeze from inside the building. Uh, if viewed from the shrine, uh, the first floor of the building uh, ha appears half buried in the ground. Uh, when viewed from the street, uh, the building looks like an intricate cave amongst the many spaces, no two are the same. Uh, the window can be <coughs> used to release natural air, and uh, it can also be fully opened like this. Uh, this is an image of interface with the neighboring house. Uh, the shrine's greenery uh, will be expanded <coughs> as the trees uh, planted be behind the uh, wall uh, in the small environment of nature. And there is a long bench in front of the building for passages by. Uh, this is used by, often, often used by people waiting at the bus stop on the sidewalk. This is a view of the building from shrine. Uh, students work until late at night. This is a view of the main sh uh, from main shrine. Uh, only the guards in the main shrine can be see this beauty. Uh, when there is a comfortable space, uh, people will get together with a clear purpose. Uh, we live in an era when the virtual communication dominates, but we believe that uh, practical learning uh, comes from uh, interaction with nature and the interaction between students and the faculty staff in the real world. Uh, we have tried to solve the conflicting needs of uh, students and residents, and we have to try to uh, share the uh, surrounding environment. 
uh, taking inspiration from the wonderful site opportunities and constraints and uh, shining light to the small site uh, where the students can come to inspire. Thank you very much. This glass faces which direction? Uh, this direction is uh, east, east. But the main? The main south. South. Ah, so. uh, shrine is the south side. Yeah. yeah. So how do you, uh, uh, that's a lot of glass to be facing south. Yeah. How do you handle all the solar gain, et cetera, and how, just the glare? How, how it? You have a, you're lo you have a very large window facing yeah, 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 yeah. directly uh, south. Yeah. Uh, How do you handle both solar gain and just the brightness of it? Break? Brightness, the amount of sun coming in. Ah, so the uh, south side of the, uh, this side, and this, there is shrine, the forest. The shrine forest is so many uh, trees. So this is not, there are natural sunshade to the south side of the building. So we can use a uh, uh, large window. So that's, that's so many sunlight is uh, cut, cut by uh, leaves. So we can use this large window. Except from 1 to 2 p.m. Yeah, you, you go back and show us. Could you, could you explain a little bit more the activities of what exactly students do? I mean, you know, I, I see, of course, lecture halls, I see teaching rooms, but, but what else is happening exactly in the building? Uh, function of this building? No, uh, what, the activities in the building, could you describe them a little bit better? Uh, the bottom of the screen, uh, this here, and uh, automatic door in our approach and uh, in the this building uh, two two up, uh, stairs uh, in the in the first floor and the second floor and the basement is uh, also two stairs and uh, one elevator here but, but what happens in here to people it's a library it's a lounge it's we a call it learning center yeah but I'm tr we're trying to I think Ben and I are trying to get a better sense of what that means. Uh, uh, it, classrooms and what else? Ah, uh, uh, this building has so many functions. The uh, uh, ground floor is, uh, is can be used in various ways, uh, as for a classroom and the lectures and the group running or lounge. So, uh, it, there's not not if there is not a classroom, uh, people can use the any space be freely. So. Uh, they uh, self-directed self learning or uh, reading book or a smartphone. Every, everyone can uh, use okay. various ways. It's part of the campus, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's across from the campus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to? Um, I just think it's very, very interesting how you have taken the two most opposite urban conditions, a 1,000-year-old shrine and a dynamic urban neighborhood, and you've made a building that addresses both with a very surprisingly high level of respect for the next-door neighbors who must have much power. I think they have a lot of power because your building really addresses them, but it's a wall. What the facing the neighbors is a blank wall with beautiful courtyards and gardens, but no views, correct? Uh, no, no views. For, no uh, views to the neighbor's house. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, no openings. No openings. Yeah. It's all mechanical. So it's ve very contrasting, the two sides of uh -huh. the building. It's very interesting. Yep. Uh, a little bit like my previous question um, about some of the other buildings, every picture you've shown us is of this front area. It's also, I think, still trying to understand what happens. What happens beyond that front area? Is it just enclosed classrooms, or what? What is there? What what kind of spaces are there? Uh, 
what kind of space? And, uh, library, lounge. Is, is, yeah, is that uh, stacks? Is it uh, classrooms? Are there just bathrooms there? Is there, what is after this first space? I don't think we saw a plan at any point of how it worked. Yeah, what, what's all the way back there? All the way, what, what? Sorry. <laughs> What, what, what is going on back there? Ah, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I show you the plan. There are also technical rooms in the section there. Yeah, it begins to show it. Okay. This is wrong? All right. So it's a lounge, bathrooms. And the, in the left side of the screen, uh, there are the toilet. Toilet and the uh, uh, next, uh, next board space is uh, outdoor unit of the air conditioning system with uh, sound insulation system. So next is uh, next so yeah by Alberta is the crossroad. Yeah, so it's really carols. yeah, so it's really about that space. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that it can be open or closed. Right. Yeah. And the many uh, uh, empty space is the mass massing room for air conditioning uh, and along the winding wall. So the uh, noise is. Uh, Protected by the wall, and there are no window. Okay. okay thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. I think that that's very clearly explained. <laughs>